Hello class, Philosophy 10, Introduction to Metaphysics and Epistemology. My name is Henry Liam, L-I-E-M, Liam. And today I will talk about Limism, the philosophy that I came up with regarding the word history. So my name used to be Nguyen Hu Liam. N-G-U-I-E-N, a very popular last name in the Vietnamese tradition. I, uh, however, I would like to have a new last name, a new dynasty for myself in America. So my first name become my last name, and Henry VIII is my first name now. And I wrote a number of books, um, including this one. And today I want to talk to you about this one. It's in Vietnamese, I'm sorry, uh, and you are not required to read or to know anything about it, but this one is just for uh, something uh, of your interest. Uh, it's my name, an outline of a philosophy for world history. Uh, I took my PhD and my dissertation was on Hegel's philosophy of history, and uh, I model his theory a word history, philosophy of word history, and American philosopher still living, Ken Wilber. And I came up with more than what they had to say um, and became this book is 600 pages. I wrote in about three months, uh, day and night. And the essence of this book is just something like this. I say word history based on the, the Weaver quadrant, like a cross. Okay, word history. Okay, now in the beginning of word history, the, or, the origin of word history became, uh, began with the I, the, the self-consciousness of who I am, the awakening of the ego, the self, the I, and the person who represents this period, or the Asio period, this one is the Buddha. And then history moved on. It became the we. The we is a beginning of relationship, beginning of society, the beginning of culture and religion. It's a relationship between the I and the not I, the society, the world, the universe, the gods, whatever. And this is the beginning of culture, ethics. Ethics or morality requires at least two persons, the relationship. So ethic is mostly about relationality of humans among themselves. And the person who represents this one is Jesus. Jesus has a saying that I and my father are the same. So there's a relationship between the I and the not I that constitute culture and society. So the I, when the I first appear, the person became self-conscious of who he is or she is. Yes, therefore the I, self-consciousness, is destiny. And come over here, when society get together and relationship begin to build, religion, society, and everything else, and that culture is destiny. Okay, history move on, and here it become the it. It means when the self-conscious, not only relation in relationship to the not I, the we, but it relates to the material dimension of the universe. And this is the beginning of empirical science. So empirical science. So science is destiny or biology of destiny, or genius destiny, 
uh, physics is destiny. This is when the consciousness of mankind deposited itself into the external world. And now we don't need the priest to say what is correct, what is right and wrong, but it is now for scientists to become the new priest in town and to say and to tell us what is right and what is wrong. And the person who begins the time of the uh, empirical science is Copernicus. Copernicus is a guy who say that <coughs> the earth is not the center. And so he came up with heliocentrism. Heli mean the sun, centrism mean the center. He said the sun is the center, not the earth. Uh, the earth is the center uh, is called geocentrism and the church and mankind, the Chinese and the Europeans always believe up until this time Copernicus that the earth was the center, is the center. But now Copernicus came up with an upside down theory and said that no, the earth is not the center, it's the sun. So, and now the priest, new priest in Tao is a scientist who, who will tell us what is right, what is wrong, what is correct, what is not correct. And then history move on to over here, it become the day. The day is politics. Politics become the destiny. It's Napoleon saying. Politics is mean when the consciousness of mankind deposit into the others. That is, in order to change the destiny of man, man have to change himself, change the culture, know the science, change the world, but also take care of the politics. That is the consciousness that man is the owner of his destiny, not God, not science, not material things, but himself, through politics. So in order for men to advance, men and women, uh, we need a structure of politics, that is democracy, nationalism, and everything. And then at, at, at this point in time, humanity moved on and they became tired. They don't believe in religion anymore. They don't believe that much in science anymore. They don't believe fanatical about politics anymore. They come back to themselves. This is our time. We are between politics and the self-consciousness again. So this is the time for the Buddha to come back. All right, that's it for today. Thank you.